Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. It's not too shabby of a morning, huh? We'll, we'll take this. Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers out there, uh, men in the congregation. It's a good day for us. And frankly, I'm just real thankful that we're all here together first today. And then maybe we can go, you know, fishing or golfing or out to eat or just be with family and kids and parents. So happy Father's Day to all of you. I want you to tune into one phrase today. It's always kind of been a tough one for us in a way, but um, maybe hopefully today we'll have a little better sense of what it means. In Galatians, the Apostle Paul says this phrase. He says, we are justified by faith in Christ. You've heard that a lot before. We are justified by faith in Christ. That means that the only way we become justifiable in our relationship with God as sinful people And that's all of us, by the way, right? We are by nature sinful and unclean. The only way we become justifiable to God in our relationship with him is by putting our faith and trust in Christ. But that isn't overly foolproof, is it? We know, ultimately, That our faith even, our faith, can't save us or justify us with God. There are many times, even whole chapters in our lives, when we don't trust Christ very well. Right? That's a big weakness for us. Paul talked about grace. Grace, you've been saved by grace through faith. And this is not of your own doing, Paul said. It is the gift of God. But that phrase in Paul, in Galatians, can also mean something else, something just a little different, and it's a shade. Here's what, it, here's what it says, that we are justified by the faith of Christ. Unfortunately, it doesn't get translated this way very often in the Bible, although if you go to your Bibles when you get home, you'll see a little footnote down there that has this phrase as part of it. We are justified by the faith of Christ. It really means that we ride on the coattails of Jesus' faith in God's mission for him, which he accomplished perfectly through his life and death and resurrection. And we ride on the coattails. This is what grace is. We ride on the coattails of his faithfulness with God the Father and with the Holy Spirit, that beautiful interrelationship in God of love and creative life. Even the writer of Hebrews talked about this and talked about Jesus as our great high priest who intercedes for us. So that Jesus' faithfulness, rather than our often pretty subpar faith, is what actually makes us acceptable to God and reestablishes a rich relationship that hopefully goes back and forth all the time, every single day between God and us, all because of Christ's faithfulness and grace. So just for a minute today, Can you imagine your relationship with God? And can you imagine it in this way? Because I'm kind of hoping that if you don't imagine it in this way now, by the time you leave, you will. Can you imagine your relationship with God that is joyful and vibrant and that is really quite personal And that flows between God and you back and forth again and again. Like it's a wonderful conversation. And that relationship that even evokes laughter and delight and warmth. As if you were walking through the door to meet God and hugging each other happily every time you see one another. I think that's the relationship of faith that comes out of Christ's faithfulness on our behalf. I also think that's what the woman in the gospel was experiencing today. 
She was certainly expressing a significant humility. Absolutely. But I think she got it with Jesus, like so many others in the Bible didn't get it about Jesus. That outpouring of ointment was like a flood of tears of joy over Jesus, having done it all for her. His grace opened the door for her to real life. She was shut out otherwise, as a woman, as a sinner. She felt his acceptance. She felt it was palpable, her, his love. It filled her soul. It transformed everything. She thought about life and the world and even the closeness of God and the personalness of God with her. When Jesus said to her, your faith has saved you, that's exactly what happened. It was the gift of Christ's faithfulness that she put her faith in that saved her. She was a new person because of the faithfulness of Jesus to live and ultimately die and rise in the deepest grace on behalf of sinners. Everyone who isn't God, that would be us too. To reestablish a relationship, not just with God in name only, but one in which we sense how much God is loving us and is rejoicing over us and is yearning that we would love and rejoice over him in the same way. And that we would yearn for that and long for that daily and feel it and well up inside, maybe even now, with the richest warmth and gratitude and personalness toward God. I told you some time ago about a fellow in a previous congregation I served who said that he had just lost any sense of a relationship that he maybe had had with God before. He said his life was a total rat race. He took no time even to talk to God, let alone search for him. Yet he really felt and knew that there was a deep longing, kind of a big hole inside of him that made him feel very empty and that made God feel very unreachable. So he built a small altar that he put in the corner of his living room. His family kind of protested because I think it was a little bit crude, but whatever. Put it in the corner of his living room, and he made a commitment to go there every single morning first thing and light a candle and read some amount of his Bible and pray and just let the serenity fill him of being there, giving himself to God. Well, he said it absolutely transformed him. He felt God with him. God reshaped his perspective, his priorities, even simply but very profoundly the start and flow of every single one of his days. God gave him the relationship, the faithfulness, the love and rejoicing that God has for us and over us and this fellow reciprocated. He is still starting every single one of his days in the same fashion. Now, what if you and I, what if you and I broke our routines and did this? It's a total paradigm shift. But what if this happened out on the deck in the morning overlooking the lake if you are up here on vacation or if you live at the lake? Or what if this happened in the morning light in your office even before you turned all the lights on and the computer and your phone? Or what if it did happen in the living room or the family room with your own altar and candles and Bible? What if you finally opened yourself to Jesus' faithfulness on your behalf and entered your relationship with God anew in a warm joy and in a warm faithfulness? We would be in awe, I know it, over our smallness, sure, oh, over our sinfulness, often over our guilt and pettiness, yes, 
But even more, we would be in awe over the fact that the God of the universe, the God of death and resurrection, of pure grace, would come to us and would know us and would rejoice over us as through Christ's faithfulness in God, God justifies us and transforms us and wants a personal, daily, alive, back and forth relationship with us. And then I know God would also cause us to see, of course, that this quality of faithfulness, warmth, forgiveness, daily life-giving ways with each other is exactly what he wants us to have in all of our own relationships. They are holy, grace-filled places where God is present as well. Want to give it a try? Blessed Father's Day, everyone. Amen. Amen.